Welcome to the 2017 Journal of Experimental Biology Symposium held in Whiston House, the United Kingdom. The JEB Symposium brings together comparative physiologists, biochemists and biomedical research scientists to stimulate exchange of ideas and information concerning various aspects of the biology of fat. Biologists have been interested in uh, mechanisms involved in fat deposition, fat breakdown, um, brown fat thermogenesis for many decades. And I thought it would be a really cool conference to have to put, you know, comparative physiologists and biochemists together with biomedical researchers um, so they can exchange what they know, uh, talk about uh, the latest developments in their fields. Um, well, I talked about birds and bats and how important um, fat is to their long-distance migrations. So I talked about um, how much fat they put on, which uh, they can essentially become really obese, like over 50% body fat. Um, and then most importantly, prob probably are the uh, changes that happen in the flight muscle that involve the transport of fatty acids from the blood into the muscle cells at really high rates to support um, the energy demands of flight. And the reason it's interesting is because when you compare it to what your typical running mammal does, um, they, they can't exercise at high intensity and use fat as the fuel. Carbohydrate is their main fuel. In Interacting has been a big, a big highlight and being questioned about some of the uh, things that I think are important in my system by people who come at it from another direction. And so I got a lot of good ideas uh, today after my talk. So the presentation I gave to the symposium was a little bit different than some of the others. I work with a different model organism. It's not really a model, uh, the whales. And I was here to talk about some of the interesting endogenous or self-made fats that these guys uh, sequester, not only in the blubber layer that keeps them warm on the outside, but also in some of the whales that echolocate, they have specialized fat depots in their heads, and those are actually made of some very unusual fats, um, not seen in any other animals, but they use them, as far as we can tell, purely for acoustic function. I have all kinds of ideas now about avenues in which I should be taking our research on these special whale fats just from listening for the people who work on um, hibernating ground squirrels or maybe the folks who are working on some human questions. During my talk, I was highlighting the importance of different adipose tissue precursor cells to the formation of adipose tissue depots uh, in order to understand how this tissue contributes to the regulation of metabolism and potentially also to the development of metabolic disease. Usually I only go to conferences that are very focused on one topic and here I'm exposed to so many different areas of research, so many different model systems that people look at and it's just a wonderful stimulating atmosphere to uh, learn to look beyond you know, the borders of your own research and really experience and, and learn a lot from other people's uh, thoughts and work. Yeah, so I was talking about uh, elephant seals who fast and lactate at the same time. So they're fasting, they're not eating anything, they're powering their metabolism solely off of lipid metabolism. So they build up these big blubber stores and burn through that when they're lactating. And that's weird because lactation is normally very, very expensive. The meeting has been really wonderful. So um, quite a broad range of expertise areas. And it's been really interesting to also have some folks that do uh, human biomedical related research, which um, is, is not necessarily in my wheelhouse so much. So hearing what they're doing and trying to relate that back to my system has been, been really, exp uh, really fantastic. So we're using humans as a model and our focus on lipids is on um, intramyocellular lipids. So these are the lipids that are being stored within myocytes. And these lipids typically are associated with insulin resistance. But on the other hand, uh, these lipids are also observed in, in quite an abundance in the trained athletes. So originally I think the idea is that, that just every Fat in the muscle is, is no good, it's doing harm to the cells. Uh, but if you store it appropriately at the proper sites, interacting with the proper organelles in droplets that are coated with selective proteins, actually it seems to be very beneficial. So if we can somehow promote the lipid droplet phenotype of a diabetic in an athlete-like manner, 
uh, you're probably better off. I really find the meeting terrific. It's um, lots of biologists around that are focusing on, on way other models than I've ever been using. Uh, and I really take a lot from that. My talk today was about how the diet of farmed salmon has changed over the past 15 years. Uh, with reduced levels of fish meal and fish oil and increasing levels of vegetable oils. Well, for a human consuming this salmon, it is still actually a good source of EPA and DHA. Well, it's uh, kind of a cross-disciplinary meeting in a way. It's a lot of different species and different topics, so it's really exciting to see what everyone else is working with. And you also get some new insights on your own topic and your own work from listening to the others, I think. I talked about the evolution of brown adipose tissue and its implication for ecology, physiology and even down to the molecular function of uh, the tissue as well as translational purposes. And we learned that the brown adipose tissue uh, has evolved not in cold environments as uh, suggested before, it has really evolved uh, in warmer climates and presumably its function originally uh, serve for offspring incubation, so really fueling the parental care model of endothermic evolution. I mean, it has been a wonderful meeting, very interdisciplinary. People who uh, usually do not really meet conventionally at meetings are really exchanging their experience. It has been really enlightening for me. Journal of Experimental Biology has published a collection of review articles based on the talks given at the Biology of Fat Symposium. The articles can be accessed for free at jeb.biologists.org.